we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. This is part of the prayer. We have started praying already. We have started preaching already. People are looking for different things. And because they are not doing it the way they're supposed to do it, many are failing. But we have just the rock of ages, Jesus Christ. If you can have this one and take him along, you are a victor already. No matter which is Sukuma, no matter what I will go back. restoration. As many that have been earmarked for poverty in this house, may God Almighty give you divine prosperity. Amen. We sprinkle the blood of Jesus upon the hearts and minds of everybody in this place. We use the blood of Jesus to pierce through every itching ear. And we command divine power from the throne of God to pierce through every conscience that has been seared, everyone that has been mapped out for destruction. And let there be a divine reversal for good in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Angels of the Lord, we need your presence in your millions. In your thousands, come and distribute to every soul in this place. In Jesus' mighty name, we are free. Yes. Divine key 
to prosperity. There are keys and there is a key. Praise the Lord. There are keys and there is a key. I was listening to one of the uh, black celebrities in the U.S. Somebody who is a musician, she is an actress, she is a host, she has a program, and she moves a lot of honor and attention. One of the interviews, they were asking her how she was able to make it. And she said she sold her soul to the devil. And the devil opened doors for her. So there are keys, but there is a divine key. There are people who have removed maybe one or two parts of their bodies and use it for ritual in order for the devil to open the door of prosperity for them. In fact, recently, somebody I was close to, I'm close to him, he was telling me of how a man of God in Enugu, in Nigeria, here, told him, um, I so much like you. You are my best friend. And the way you struggle in ministry, I don't want you to struggle again. I know you are not going to reject this offer. Look at my cars. Look at the place we worship God. The truth is that you can just do one or two things and then your story will change forever. And the man of God, man of God in quotes, said he took his power from River Niger. And that, see, this thing, I recorded it in my phone. It's in my phone till today. That if you can just do it, you will see your life will turn around for good. But the other one, they were trying to bring in, ask him, but do you remember one revelation that God revealed to me that you are not going to live long? And you were crying, and you said, yes, you will soon die. So you want me to come and join you, so that me, I will then soon die. So why am I saying this? There are keys, but there is a divine key. Revelation chapter 3 verse 8 says, Behold, I lay before you an open door that no man can do what? No man can shut. And in the description of Jesus, the Bible says that he is the one that opens and no one can shut. And when he shuts, no one can do what? Because the key, this master Jesus is using is a divine key. You can't take it to any house, any craftsman, and say, I need a duplicate of this key. Nobody can duplicate it. So once he opens for you with this divine key, even the enemy themselves cannot shut it. And once he locks the door of sickness, no power in heaven and on earth can open the door. Can you clap for our Jesus? This is a father that we have. He opens, and no one can shut. And when he shuts, no man can open. Shout amen. amen. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Divine key to prosperity. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hear king, diligently utter the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, Underline this word, all his commandments. Underline these words. Which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on where? On high, not below. Above all nations of the earth. And these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. These blessings shall come upon you, and they will do what? 
they will overtake you. That in the race of the destiny of your life, as you run and as you struggle in life to make it, the blessings that the Lord will release will come, they will meet you, they will even overtake you and be ahead of you. Say amen. amen. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Look at verse 8. The Lord, somebody said the Lord, the Lord. says shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouse. Command, command, command. I want us to have a deep understanding of what we are looking at today. The earth we are dwelling upon today, the earth is only carrying about 7 billion human beings. Now, but this earth cannot feed us. People are dying of hunger. People are dying. But the original plan of God is that nobody should die. In this place, we would have found food even for Adam and Eve till now. There wouldn't have been suffering. We would have had trillions of trillions of humans on earth by now. It is death that is reducing us and wickedness. Look at the children of Israel. They were in a dry land. They were living for 40 years in the desert. But God was providing food for them all. From heaven. Because even the place they were living, that place was so dry that even if you plant, if God does not release rain from heaven, nothing will happen. And there were wild animals, lions, different kinds of animals that could tear human beings apart. They were in the land, but God protected them. They had no fence. This is the same God saying that on one condition, that the condition is that if you can obey, then I will give a command. Just obedience, obey, and I will give a command. Let's do a small test in the house. Can you tell your neighbor? Say neighbor. neighbor. Say neighbor. neighbor. I say shake, 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 shake somebody. Say neighbor. neighbor. Are, you God? Are you obedient to God? What is the answer? Yes. All of us here, we are obedient to God. Daddy, thank you. All your members are flying to heaven. They are all obedient to God. I'm glad to hear that. I'm very happy to hear that. <laughs> may God deliver us. I say, may God deliver us. Amen. The earth that God created was to provide for our needs. The earth is supposed to produce all the husbands that we need. This earth is supposed to produce all the jobs that we need. But when Adam and Eve sinned against God, open your Bible to Genesis chapter 3. When they sinned against God, in verse 17, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and as eating of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is a ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. This was the beginning of the problems of man. And right here, God is saying that if you can obey me, the same voice I use in cursing the earth, I will use the same mouth.
out and the same voice to command my blessings to pursue you and overtake you. It's possible. Very, very possible. When a child of God was having a challenge in Genesis chapter 26, Isaac, the son of Abraham, was having a challenge. What was a challenge? It was a challenge of famine. Everywhere was dry. And this man moved to Gera. And from there, he planned. He said, let me go down to Egypt. Because in Egypt, I have heard things are better than what it is here now. Before the man moved, God spoke to him. Verse 2, Genesis 26, 2. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell of thee. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee, and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I saw to Abraham, thy father. Look at verse 12. Verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in the land. Which land? The land that was stricken by famine and drought. The land that was unproductive. Isaac obeyed God. God said, Isaac... Don't go to Egypt. Stay here. And in this land you see that is dry. In this land, I am going to do what? I am going to bless you. And the man swept the land, cleared it, took his seeds, and sowed upon the dry ground. Obedience. Tell your neighbor, say obedience. obedience. Is the key. To prosperity. The man looked beyond what the physical situation of the land was saying. And he sold in the land. Look at what happened. And received in the same year, the same year, an hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The Lord blessed him. If we can just obey and follow God, if we can just look beyond our society, the way our colleagues are living, and just follow God, things will work fine. And I want to draw our attention to two things, which is working with God and hard working. Hard work. Me, I believe in the obedience of God. And I also believe that when you have faith and you don't put your faith into action, that faith is what? Is dead. So you can't be praying to God and be in church from Monday to Sunday and asking God for blessings and you don't do anything in life. A man was to buy something from a lady. And the man was speaking good English. And the lady was responding well. And the man looked at how refined this lady was. And asked, lady, where did you stop at school? Did you go to school at all? She said, yes. You stopped at where? He said, I'm a graduate. Why are you hawking? Say, so, well, as a matter of fact, I want to live a responsible life. As I pray to God to give me a job, I don't want to sit at home. So I decide to hawk and do something for myself. And the man said, this is the type of person I am looking for. 
this one is a type I am looking for. With all your degrees, if you can come out and hawk, if I give you an appointment, you are not going to misbehave. You, even as we obey God, we have to put that obedience into work and back it up with faith that in this one I am doing, the Lord is going to bless me. A song says, Le come, le come, le come, Kake le come, rara, watele, Jesu no kaka wuku, Omakila, Akumara subunake. He said, When you say, Pastor, pray for me, pray for me. He said, Listen, no, pray for yourself first. Pray for yourself first. Yes, no, if you don't do anything and you depend on the louder the amen, the bigger the miracle, and you stop there, your voice will crack. You will lead totem and lead totem and lead totem to smoothing your tongue and remain in the same place. After you have caught it, man of God, I receive, I cast it. You don't go home to sleep. You go home and put that faith into action. Praise the Lord. In this world we are living in, if you are ready to obey God, then be ready to move against the crowd. Everybody in this world, they are moving towards one direction. The Bible says that narrow, narrow is the way that leads to life, but broad, wide is the way that leads to destruction, and many are on that way. We have a culture in this world, and in the church, for the children of God, there is another culture, that is the culture of Jesus. One of our fathers here, I can't actually remember, I think Revenu Mukoro. One of us here, he said, you don't know how serious the sin of disobedience is. When you see a witch, you say, let the witch die. Suffer not a witch to live. And he read the statement of God to Saul. That disobedience is as serious as a sin of witchcraft. It doesn't matter what we say. It doesn't matter the profession. We profess with our mouth. If we don't do what we say, if there is a division between what we say and profess with what we do, our practical lifestyle, then we are liars. If somebody looks at you and said, uh, my friend, I love you so much. I love you so much. I love you. Will you take that kind of love? Somebody is setting blow for you and is telling you he loves you. Will you take it? That is what some of us are doing. We are saying one thing and we are doing another thing. There is a divorce between the two. Christianity is just a simple mathematics. Prosperity in life is a simple mathematics. Unfortunately, we did not sin when we were born. But our forefather, Adam and Eve, they sinned against God. And because we are their descendants, we carry that curse. And God says, if you want to remove it from your head, go and obey me. And I will command the windows of heaven to pour blessings upon you to the extent that your rooms will not be able to contain them. That is Malachi. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The same Genesis. 
Let me tell you something. When Esau was deceived, Isaac was deceived, and then Esau took the blessings of Jacob. Let me read something to you. Me, I believe in hard work, but I believe in the grace of God. I work hard because faith without work is dead. So I put my faith into action. But I don't rely on the work I do. I rely on the one that can command the blessings upon the work I do. And that prosperity will show forth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Genesis 27, verse 28. Therefore, this is Isaac blessing Jacob. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. That this one was never to suffer. This man was carrying a blessing in himself and he needed to deposit that blessing upon someone. But that one that qualified by birth to receive the blessing was not living the life that is worthy of the blessing. So it went to whom was diligent enough to receive it. When her wife, their house, and he know they live like her wife, the man could they see what he like inside the house help went to the house. <laughs> Trouble don't come. Because the man is not a wood. He's a human being. He's a rational being. The next thing is, ask help. They take my husband from me. Where you did that time? I'm not trying to justify the arts. But there are things every man needs in a woman. Praise the Lord. If the man sees that in, in a cripple or in a blind girl, he will go for that one. And when people are telling him, he will say, after all, love is blind. Look at verse 39. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, he said unto his soul, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. And of the dew of heaven from above. If you read the, the NIV, it says your dwelling shall be a way. A way. It shall be a way from the dew of heaven. That means one was to live under the provision of heaven. The other one was to live outside the provision of heaven. When Cain killed Abel, in Genesis chapter 4, after Cain killed Abel, God told Cain, that listen Cain, from today you shall till the ground, but it shall not release unto you its yield. It will not release its strength to you. Are we obedient enough? This is not the time to cut corners. Nobody should deceive us that you can live your life the way you like and the grace of God will make it up for you. It is a lie. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Neighbor. Nalayo. Nalayo. Try it one day. Buy materials, ingredients for soup. Buy fish, buy meat. Cook food. Before you drop the food down, Add little kerosene, drops of kerosene, or tapia pia inside. Will you still have soup? Okay, do it with faith. Pray, cast and bind. Just add little kerosene to the soup. Will it work? It will not work. We should not forget that the same earth we are living in is the same world that Satan is living in. To whomsoever we submit our lives to, we dwell in the atmosphere of that power above us. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. 
If you know you are not of this world, then submit totally to the one that can command the things of this world to obey you. Let's open our Bibles to Romans chapter 8. Romans 8, 28. Are you there? Yes. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. That if you are obedient to God, God will then command everything around you to work together for your good. I want us to put some things into consideration even as we round up. How are you living your life? Does God know you as a daughter? Does God know you as a son? Does he know me as a son? I have a simple understanding in ministry that if I must prosper in ministry, if I must have divine prosperity, I don't need to please you. I need to please the one that can speak to you to bless my life. If the hearts of members are not born again, their pockets can never be born again. That is why some people can collect our books and never, never return the money. But when you have people who are born again, they will just look at you and say, Pastor, come, let me bless your life. Man of God, what do you have in this church? What need do you have in this church? They will just give willingly. So also, as a housewife, stop pleasing your husband to disobey God. A housewife cannot do competition with a prostitute on the streets. That is her job. You spend all the time when you see the one your husband is running after, he said, I saw the shirt, nah, the skirt, the shirt rich now. Nah. No worry. I go go be take tomorrow now. Nah. You take your clothes to the tailor and you tell the tailor, please push them up. My husband is going crazy. If you can go down on your knees and talk to your father in heaven, that your father in heaven will touch that man. Even if you are putting on buluku, he will look after you and will not look outside. The Bible says the hearts of kings are in the hands of God Almighty. He directs their hearts the way he directs the course of the sea. And I ask married men who are in this place, how many of you that are asking your wives to go naked and not looking outside? How many of you don't look outside? Most men who tell their wives, please look out to, look out to, look out to, to the extent that the hotness is creating burning the AC in the house. Many of those men cannot sleep with the wife alone and be satisfied. They must go outside. So why will you disobey somebody who holds the hearts of your husband and begin to obey somebody that will not even give you the desired results for your disobedience? Me, I have resolved that in my life, whether you have money or not, I will tell you the truth that God has put in my mouth. And because we tell you the truth in divine encounter, you take our money to one false prophet who will somersault and prophesy false prophecies to you, and you knock your head on the ground three times and close your back account. And here you will be sweating on that divine encounter where the real thing is happening. And you don't drop any money. If our money is in your pockets and you are taking it outside and we are suffering under this atmosphere of miracle, one day now one day, God will trouble that your pockets and he will bring that money to this altar. Amen. If you are a young man, you are a young woman in this house, old, any class you belong to, 
Why don't we just make up our minds and follow God? So that he can command his blessings upon us. I know a man, a young boy called Joseph. Joseph desired to follow God. When he pleased God, the more he was obeying God, the more things were getting worse for him. And this man said, I had a dream. And I know that the God of heaven and earth will fulfill this dream in my life. He followed it. The worst place he landed himself, the prison. From there, God shut him up. And he, become, he became a prime minister. It is not how hot you look. I was listening to a man of God yesterday over the internet. And he was saying, if your husband has not met you, it doesn't mean that you are possessed. It means maybe you have not packaged yourself very well. May God forgive him. There are other things he said. I don't want to repeat here. Because this is a holy place. If a man, guys, listen, listen to me. If a man wants to flirt and while away the time of the night, he will go to any rejection and look for sheep guys. When he wants to settle down, he will not go to any rejection. He will go to the choir. He will go to guest gig. He will go to the man of God and ask the man of God, is there any God-fearing young girl in this your church? He will look for somebody that is responsible. And you that have been frying it on me for him, you that have been wasting all the time for him, in his mind they will be telling him, you give me pleasure, I give you money, contract close. Because he knows that once he puts you into his house, he is in trouble already. So when he wants to settle down, he will leave you and forget the years you have spent together and go and marry somebody. Now, why don't we obey God? So that God can bring that husband and bring that wife. Guess are the gatekeepers of sex. Meanwhile, we have a lot of people who we shade. And when somebody comes and say, okay, how much? You start quarreling. I tell you, see how they say. You know they say, why you shit? <laughs> if you want divine blessings to locate you, then position yourself where? If you position yourself where, God will not come and locate you. I tell people, you don't go to ShopRite and AJ and Mr. Beans and you begin to test granites there. Madam, how much for this your granite? You are breaking and you are eating and chewing and you have not paid. You don't try it there. But when you go to a good market, when you see these hawkers, you just stop them and say, okay, how much for this your granite? Oh boy, how much for this your uh, granite? You are eating and testing if you like, you pay. If you don't like, you say you can go. You have to tell yourself, this is the standard of my life. I want to obey God. If you are here, you want to test, this is shop right. You don't test here. You pay before you open it. The same granato, they put some in bottles, they spread some on the tray. The same farmer produce them. But the person that owns them, we package them very well. I say this one, Belongs to God. This word, Naini Ha, we don't share that. Let us pray. Let him move as he is. Yes. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Let us pray. I want us to talk to our God. I don't know if you have thrown away those keys. The key, divine key to prosperity. And because of that, you are struggling. 
Even when the man of God says you are blessed, another thing will be saying, no, this one is already cursed. You can't receive the blessing. Man of God, retrieve that blessing. We can't give it to this one. This one is Esau. Is there anything in your life like that? Close your eyes. Can you silently talk to God? Can you tell your father why your life is full of struggle, full of disturbing situations and circumstances? Tell the Lord, Lord, today let there be a divine change in this program of divine encounter. Let there be a change in my life. If there is any wrong in your life, can you just confess it to God? That Lord, any class I have grouped myself that is preventing you from receiving the preventing me from receiving your blessings. Oh Lord God, forgive me and help me today. are here and you are in that group or standing in any rejunction in the evening looking for a husband there can you tell the Lord Lord I change today if you are in that group who asks your wife to go naked on the road because you are struggling to love her if you are that woman who does everything to please the husband and disobey God? Can you confess that thing to God? If you are cutting corners, you pay the invigilator so that you can pass your exams. Can you confess it to God? If you are here and all your pastors are fake prophets, who don't tell you the truth? They just prophesy to you, prophesy to you, and you are happy. Can you ask God for forgiveness? Round up your prayer. Father, behold us in this house. May your mercy speak for us. May your grace speak for us in the place we can't speak for ourselves. As many who have turned their hearts to you, Father, release that key upon their lives. Release that divine key upon their lives. And if there is anyone under the atmosphere of this administration, under this atmosphere that is saturated with the presence of the Holy Ghost, if you have given your life to God, be the messenger of Satan is buffeting you Today, receive your freedom in the name of Jesus. If there is any man marrying you in the coffin, if there is any woman marrying you in the coffin, and because of that, you can't find a spouse in this world, may the fire of God break that relationship. May the wind of fire Enter your life and correct all the wrongs in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we'll thank you for your word today. Open for us so that no man can shut. Shut evil doors so that no evil man can open them again. In the name of God, the Father, Amen. and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com Email us at rosannadavid at ymail.com or info at egoeyeopener.com God bless you.